Hey folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to another episode of our Guide to Surviving Mars for Complete Beginners. At this point, we actually have people living on Mars, but we're running into our first issue. We're running low on machine parts. Our last supply ship, we brought plenty of polymers, plenty of electronics, but I didn't bring any machine parts. Instead, I did bring a machine parts factory with us so that we can start producing our own. But we're running really low. We got to start doing that right away. What's the bad thing if we run out of something like machine parts? Well, I mean, obviously we can't build anything else that requires you to have machine parts to build it. But in addition to that, some of our buildings actually need to be maintained with machine parts. Um... For example, our water extractor. You can see here, this is its maintenance bar. When it hits uh, full, when this fills up completely, that means it hits 100% deterioration. The, the building will stop working until it's been maintained by a drone that uses a machine part. If we don't have any machine parts, we can't fix the water extractor and we're gonna have a major, major problem as our people get thirsty and all our crops die. So we've got to resolve this before we run out of machine parts. Now. Because I'm playing the International Mars mission, I have lots of rockets and lots of money. I could just send a cargo rocket full of machine parts. However, I'm going to try to deal with that problem on Mars itself. So if we go and right click into the building mode and we go to the production tab over here, you can see we have one prefab for machine parts factory. All these buildings with a number like on them, that's how many prefabs we have available. These are all buildings we can't build ourselves as well as a number of prefabs. Now, what can happen is we could develop the technology to be able to build our own machine parts factory. You would no longer see the number one here uh, because it is something you build ourselves. When you mouse over, it would still tell you how many available prefabs there are. But anyway, we've got a prefab here. So if I click on this, we, couldn't, we can put a machine parts factory anywhere. It's very big and it has to be inside of a dome. Can't be built outside. It's got to be built inside of a dome. So I'm going to go ahead and build it there. We are getting a note. Hey, you don't have enough power for this. The machine parts factory, if you look on the right hand side, it's going to take 10 concrete, 10 metal and two electronics to build. That part's fine, but it consumes 30 power, 30 power to make this thing run. Ouch. That is really, really painful. Well, and we really don't have anywhere close to that much power. So before we do this, I guess we're going to have to build more power generation of some fashion. Now I, I'm out of the Sterling generators, unfortunately. But we could build a bunch more solar panels and, and wind generators, and I guess we're going to do that. I'm actually thinking I might do it along the stretch here, although you can see the dust on the cables here. See, this place is clean. Here it's dusty. And that's, you know, in large part because of our various mining operations. Um, there's more mining going on there, and we might end up mining here Research too. Complete. And our spaceships Mining's are going to take off. Analyzed. Where are we going to build that? You know what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to go, and I hit C to go into cable building mode. I'm going to build a cable out over here. I don't want to build too far because cables need to be maintained and the drones have a fair way to go. But we're going to, I think I'm going to build a, a series of solar panels and wind generators over here. Solar panels are very cheap to build. They only need metal, which is really nice to maintain and build. Um, let's, let's put it over on this side. That's going to be okay. Um, but of course only run during the day. I like doing this where I, I kind of alternate. If you hold shift, by the way, when you place it down, then you can place a bunch of them um, in one go. I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to build a handful of wind turbines. They run all the time. And mostly for the solar panels, I'm also going to build some extra batteries here because that way we can store the power that they make during the day. I'm going to go with something like that. So hopefully, because each one of these can generate up to five, five power during the day. So that's 10, 20, 30. This actually pays for our, um, our, Machine parts factory Sector by itself scan. during the day. Plus, these guys are going to produce a little bit more than five scan. each. And then between the two and having the batteries, I think we're going to be okay. We're done scanning right now. So I'm going to go ahead and click and I'm going to queue up a bunch more things to be scanned over here. We've got a bunch of anomalies. So I'm going to go and our little RC Explorer here. I'm going to make sure he keeps scanning some anomalies like over there. Um, I do tend to prioritize the ones that are beakers or the flasks because they do give you science points. But this one was close, so it seems okay. Plus, again, the keys will give us more research options. So I think we're going to be fine power wise. So I'm going to go ahead now and put down the machine parts factory. If you do start to run into power problems, you can always just turn off the machine parts factory temporarily and say, listen, let's let's not use any power on this thing. We're going to deal with the power crisis and then turn our, our production back on. So we're going to have going to have tons of batteries. This is probably more batteries than I'll ever need 
well, for at least a very, very long time. But hey, more power so storage, more better. And you can see during the day, we have a huge power surplus. At night, we won't have quite as much as one, uh, especially once this gets built over here. Now, this building... Thank you, Anomaly Analyze. So again, that's going to reveal more technologies. Drone Hub, Low G Drive. I'm just going to shoosh that guy for now. And I'm going to keep using our RC Explorer if we can here. Um, I'm going to go to this eyeball over here because it's quite close. Okay. So this machine factory, to function, it's going to need workers. We're only going to use one shift right now. And it's going to need um, metal. Now, I think... You, if we look at our power, we still have plenty of power. I don't think it runs at all while it doesn't have any workers. Now, here's the thing. We, we're we out of machine parts now. We're completely out of machine parts. In fact, I think we need machine parts to build the wind turbines. What are we going to do? Well, we have tons of metal. And, you know, there's still metal that we can collect on the surface. Look, there's tons of metal over here. So I can even tell my, my little RC transport over here. I could tell it to go and pick up this metal. I could set up a little transport and say, pick up the metal here and unload it over here you know and and so we've got tons of metal maybe we don't need to mine right now so what we're going to do is two things first i'm just going to turn off the metal extractor that means the metal extractor will no longer use power and all the people that were working there will now go work somewhere else so if we check some of the workers have now moved over here the other thing you can do is you can change the priority of a building so I could raise the level of the priority of this building, which means it's going to get first crack at metal. It's going to get first crack at employees. If I do this, actually, most likely a fifth person will come and work here after a little bit. They'll, they'll leave another workplace and work here instead. Um, it also becomes the high priority for power, which may not be what we want. It means if we don't have enough power for everything, the power will come here first. There we go. See, one of our employees moved over from somewhere else. I think I'm going to lower it. Now, you can keep clicking to cycle. You can also right-click to cycle the other way. I'm going to leave it at medium, and that's fine. Now, our power is still really good right now, and that's because it's currently no one is working here. I could set a second shift. We could have... went dark for five hours. Ooh. When it rebooted, it confirmed it had come into contact with an unusually high-voltage electrical charge. Interesting. So we got a funky event with our exploration rover over here. We got some money for it. But our rover is broken now. Now, our rover... Where's our exploration worker? It's over here. Luckily, he's within range of a drone hub, so someone will come repair him. If he wasn't, we'd have to move out our RC rover to be within range. But he's going to get repaired. Interesting. Anyway, so yeah, you can, you can mess around with the ships. You can mess around with the priority, depending on what the most important thing is. I suppose what I could do is I could turn on the metal extractor, but put it really low priority so that it doesn't really get any workers. But I'm going to explicitly turn it off for now. Clearly, though, we're going to want more people here. But of course, I can't send more people until the founder stage is over, which means we have to wait for seven days, or we can have our people start making babies. Now, people will start making babies when they are comfortable. The more comfortable they are, the faster they will make babies, I believe is, is what the game says. I don't know what the actual numerical mechanics of it are. Um, I don't have that info. Probably that'll come out as at release. But the more comfortable they are, the more likely they are to have babies. So, there's two ways we can have Martian babies. One, make people more comfortable. The other thing you can do to speed things along, if you go into Dome Services over here... Wow, the music got really loud all of a sudden. Is it just me? Feels like it got really loud. The Dome Services over here... I guess I can bring it down. By the way, there's multiple radio stations as well. Um, I really like the official Mars channel. And um, at release, if you there's a, a extra Mar a channel you can get. It's like Quantum something that's going to be very good. So, I'm just going to lower the, the radio volume a bit. What was I saying? Oh, yes, making babies. If we right-click and we go to the Dome Services tab over here, first of all, we can build more buildings to help satisfy the comfort needs of people. But you can also build... Is it not services? I think... Oh, no, it is here. Services. Infirmary. Infirmary does two things. One, it provides the medical checks service. Your people may have their, their health lower over time and in what they will need is they'll need to visit the infirmary to get healthy again otherwise they might die from low health in addition to that a dome with a medical building has a lower minimum comfort requirement for birth people feel more comfortable having babies if they know that there's going to be support for them medically so i'm going to, have to get an infirmary built right over here so we're, we're going to see if we can get some martian babies being made of course you also need room but we have room we have room for two extra people over here so that's going to be okay I'm going to unpause. If we click on the dome here and we mouse over the comfort, we can get info about what 
is p making people disappointed in their comfort. You can see someone here saying, hey, they couldn't satisfy their social interest need. There was no building that provides that need. So how can we figure that out? If we go into build mode, we can mouse over the buildings and see what services the buildings provide. A space bar provides relaxation, drinking, and social. Oh, that sounds great. Space bar is also really big, so I don't know if we're going to do that one. Um, we've got a diner, though. It provides dining service, social, and also food. The grocery that we've already got built down also provides the food need, but the diner would provide both dining and social and maybe make people happier. Oh, that's interesting. It does need more workers, though. And so does the infirmary. You can see the infirmary needs workers. Reason. Now, if Thank I recall you. correctly, I believe we have a medic. And yeah, so most likely they'll move over. Ooh, people really moved over here quite quickly to work in the infirmary. I don't know if we would have wanted that many people to kick in, but... I guess that's fine. Oh, we got the research done on our Explorer AI, which is lovely. So this is going to give us even more research for free every day. We're up over 500 now. We've almost doubled our initial research. We're going to research the low G high rise, which lets us build apartment buildings, which aren't very comfortable, but can fit a lot of people. And uh, maybe we'll, we'll research actual farms after that. We can also start down some of the physics and social. So more applicants available on Earth. Yeah, that, that'll be nice. We can boost our extractors. That that means this is a, a and all upgrades to buildings are optional. You can choose whether or not you you add an upgrade to a building, and you can toggle them on and off even after they're built. So this extractor upgrade means that the extractors produce 25% better, but need 10 more power, which is a lot. So you might want to like pick and choose a lot more about that. Um, this over here gives us the ability to build drone hubs because right now we don't have the ability to build them from scratch. We have to prefab them from Earth. This gives us the ability to build our own machine parts factory. We had to send a prefab from Earth for that, but this would give us the ability to build our own, which is very nice. Low G drives is nice. Our drones and rovers move faster. We also, you can see the research cost is 750. That's because we actually, that event we got that shut down our Explorer actually gave us a 50% discount to developing this. So I know that sounds pretty good. Let's go and keep this queue nice and active. That's going to be fine. What is this? Utility crops. Unlocks new crops in farms and hydroponic farms that provide oxygen and improve soil quality. Okay, we'll put that in a queue as well. These all sound like really good ideas. Again, you will get different technology than me because it's randomized every time. So, I mean, you'll get all the technology in the end, but some of it might be really late in the game, be very expensive, and you'll have to deal with not having them for a very long time. So we're going to keep an eye on the comfort here. Again, it would be really nice to satisfy more of these needs, but we really just don't have the workers for it, especially if we want people working in the machine parts factory. And honestly, I kind of feel like the infirmary is maybe not quite as important as the others. Like, I really, I would like the, the medics to work here, but, you know, the others, I don't know. Maybe I'll just bring up the machine parts factory. I'm going to bring it up to maximum priority is what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave everything on normal, but I'm really going to encourage people to work there. Um, and honestly, the hydroponics farm would be another one to boost, but we've got tons of food right now, so I'll leave it be. Research isn't critical right now, but it's pretty handy. The collaboration loss is, I believe, if you have more than one research lab in a dome, each one starts to produce a little bit less. You still get more research overall, but there's a sort of diminishing returns thing here. So you don't just loading a dome like full of research labs would be bad. Speaking of though, ooh, let, let me finish my thought. Your people Miles live within a single dome. They can move from one dome to another. Like literally, I no longer live in this dome. I now live in this other dome. They will move from one to another if the situation requires it. But they won't go from one dome to another to work or to shop or something like that. They, they, whatever dome they live in, that's the only dome they're in. They will go outside to work at a mine, for example, but that's it. So we have produced food. That's another milestone. We did a warning here. Idle extractor, a building with depleted deposits. Let's click on that. This concrete extractor over here has grabbed all the concrete that it possibly could from this spot. It no longer does anything for us over here. So we may as well go ahead and salvage it. We'll, we'll get a little bit of metal and a little bit of machine parts back from doing that. Now, the shell of the building will still be there for now, right over here. And it's still going to be in our way. We have the option of rebuilding it. There's also a button here to clear it, to remove this building completely so that we have room to put something else here. However, we need a specific tech to be able to do that. Now, we still have plenty of concrete here, 165, so we may not need to stress about it, but I think I will go and build another little concrete mine. 
Um, this is the this was the lower grade, and it's also pretty close to stuff for dust. Um, is this within range? Yeah, just barely. I don't like building super long cables, but I think actually right now it's going to be fine for us to just go and work this over here. So I'm going to go for production, another concrete extractor. I'm going to try to overlap as much of this as possible, and then I'm just going to go and finish the um, cable connection over there to do that. And that's going to be okay. This is still our concrete depot over here. The drones will have to travel a fair amount of ways, but that's all right. We'll leave that there. We've got a rocket ready to go. This guy here is ready to launch because it's full of fuel. However, however, notice that this rocket still has some polymers and electronics in it. If I were to go to launch this, I believe I would get a warning. I hope I would get a warning. Yes, I would. Hey, 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 there's still resources on this. If you launch it to Earth, you're going to lose these resources. You're sending a bunch of polymers and electronics back to Earth. Oh, never mind. I don't want to do that. So these resources aren't being unloaded because there's just there's just no room. Our universal storage here, you can see big stacks of electronics, big stacks of polymers, big stacks of food, big stacks of um, concrete. It's just full of the stuff. Uh, so we could go and build some more storage here. We could build more universal storage. I think what I'm going to do... Home on an alien world. That takes guts to ah! say the least. Willie Merrickson. Hey, remember him? His enthusiasm has proven to be above average, even by founder norms, and the prodigious productivity displayed can be boiled down to one simple explanation. William Erickson really loves doing what William Erickson's doing. He has gotten the enthusiast trait. That's great. We could view him. I'll just say that's the spirit. We're going to keep looking over here. So I'm going to put down some more storages here. We clearly need more storage for polymers. We need more storage for electronics. And we actually could use more storage for food because our passenger rocket over here still has tons of food stored in here so let's set up the storage we'll get the drones to go and empty these bad boys so that we can go and launch this rocket and get it out of here and again we are playing as the international mars mission we have tons of money and tons of extra rockets i could easily be sending more rockets our way to give us more resources but i'm holding off so that we can be a little self-sufficient and you know actually learn how to make some of this work here so Comfort level, again, it's not too bad. Not too many people are complaining about too many things. Some of our people might be more comfortable than others. Um, let's say I click on our living quarters over here. We've got all the people that live here. I can click on any one of them. Here's Ho Ling over here. Remember our genius? Look at that. So she's okay. She visited the grocer. That made her happy. But yeah, no social buildings. Hmm. I don't think any of our parks are social, are they? They can give you relaxation, exercise, and playing. Yeah, we really would need to get a diner. Oh! Oh, we've researched our first Research spire. Complete. So this is a category that wasn't there before, the dome spires building. Dome spires are buildings that go in the middle of your domes like this, and they do really special things. First of all, how beautiful is this building? This is the water reclamation spire here. It recycles up to 70% of the water used in the dome, so you need a lot less water. It does take a fair amount of materials to build, although that's not as much of a problem. It also needs workers. It'll need a total of six workers to be working full-time to get the full benefit of this. We really don't have the workers to do it, but, I mean, we could just build it and then turn it off or put it low priority or something. It's just so beautiful, it's hard to resist. But I will resist! I will not build it quite yet. Ah, research complete. Low G high-rise. Good. So we are going to want to send some more people here soon. So, tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into our dome homes, and I'm going to build an apartment. Now, note, the living quarters have a comfort rating. Oh, it doesn't list it here? I thought it listed it here. I guess not. If you click on the dome, it tells the comfort of residence is 50. The apartments are less comfortable, but they fit twice as many people. I think it's worth building an apartment over here so that we can get a lot more people. Again, we can't ship anyone yet because we're still in the founder stage, but as soon as that's over, we can ship another busload of 12 people. In fact, we can start sending a bunch of rockets and really populate this dome, get a lot of workspaces active. Are you empty yet? Almost. You still have some electronics on you, so we'll just wait a little bit longer before we launch you. The blinking is a little bit annoying to me. Wish you could, like, get it. Listen, only blink when you're actually empty. Otherwise, you know, I don't really care too, too much, but there it is. We're at a concrete extractor working over here, which is good. I'm going to go and put a dumping site over here for a rock. I'm just going to hold shift and put down, I don't know, three of them. That sounds okay. Um, I'm not building a new uh, concrete storage spot. We've got one over here. Most, I mean, the drones are going to have to travel a long way, but one way or another, they'll have to travel a long way. So I guess that's fine. It's okay. It's just a temporary thing anyway. Sector scanned. More sector scans are happening. Tell you what we can do. 
we would like to scan these sectors a lot faster and our speed is going a lot slower on our scans and that's because we don't have any sensor arena, uh, sensor towers built up nearby so we'd like to do that we'd also like our explorer to keep exploring you're low on power let's get you to charge up here um i think it might be time for our first tunnel oh money over here what is this this is a rare metals deposit Rare metals have the money icon because you can actually, this is the one thing that by default, you can load onto your rockets and send them back to Earth with. You can see here gathering exports. If you export rare metals to Earth, they will give you money. And that's especially if you're not running the International Mars mission and you're not like infinitely rich. Running uh, exporting rare metals is potentially a way for you to fund more stuff. So you send rare metals to Earth and use that to buy, you know, more prefabs or something like that. The rare metals are also used to fabricate our own electronics. So you, one could imagine we're going to want a dome here later on. So what we'll do is we'll plan an expansion over here. And we're going to do that by building a tunnel. So tunnels do need a lot of machine parts. It's a good thing we're building them. I guess we'll wait a little bit longer before we actually get it done. You know what? I'm going to speed things up. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to send ourselves a new cargo rocket over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to send us, we already have a machine parts factory on the go. I'm going to get an electronics factory, a polymer factory. I'm going to get two fuel refineries so we can talk about this stuff. I'm getting two for a very, very, very good reason. That'll be obvious once we start working it. I'm then going to ship a bunch of machine parts to kickstart us a little bit more. Like that. And a handful more polymers because we're not actually building the polymers and electronics yet. Okay, I'm pleased with this. We're going to go and launch this rocket. That's going to be okay. This one, is it ready to go? Yep, it is now empty. So if I launch, I will no longer get a warning of, hey, you've got stuff on here. So that's good and swell. So I'm going to go and get our tunnel started here. I'm going to build it. Really doesn't matter where it is. I don't know. It feels like this is a swell place to put the tunnel. You know, right next to the dome? Sure, that seems okay. So we're going to do that. And then we have to build the other end of it. If I cancel right now, It'll cancel the first part because your tunnels are connected. So I'm going to build a tunnel here. And there is a limit to how far you can go. You can see here it goes Second too far. Scan. But over here is fine. I hear I'm only getting the warning that we're too far from a drone, Commander. But that's okay. So let's build it. Um, you know what? I kind of like the idea of here. Because one can imagine we're going to build some stuff here. We might end up with a dome right here. I think that's going to be the case. Now I can rotate this. I suppose doing something like that would sort of make the most sense visually with the other tunnel. So... Sure, let's do that. Now you'll notice that the tunnels Resources have a spot low. where they can be connected to a pipe. And we'll want to do that, in fact. Uh, there we go. I think if we do that, you'll be connected up to the, the grid. And also with power. Like that. Because power and your pipes. Pipes carry, by the way, both water and oxygen. I don't know if I was clear about that before. But pipes carry both water and oxygen. So they will now be routed through the underground route. I mean, we don't have any machine parts right now. We're slowly producing them over cable here. Fault reported. And we've got some cables going down, but that's okay. We're going to wait for that shuttle to show up. It's going to give us a bunch of machine parts. We'll get that going, and then we can build it the other side. Now, any work that happens here, it builds both sides of the tunnel simultaneously. So as soon as it's done here, the other side of the tunnel is also done. I mean, it's easy to imagine. The drones are going into the tunnel and working on things. It makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, we are running on maximum speed. Good. People here... I'd be happier with social. I suppose, I mean, we're going to send some more people here soon, right? And we've got resources coming in. Let's keep our people as happy as possible. Let's give them a diner so they can do social stuff there and they can fill, fulfill their dining trait. I'm going to put it there. And actually, again, when you're working these small ones, there's just enough room for either a small garden or a small fountain or a small alley in right in the middle. Let's put a fountain this time. Small fountain right in there. How big is the statue? Oh, we could put a statue in there as well. But I think the fountain will be lovely. Give a place to, for people to do some, um, what was it? Relaxation, exercise, and playing. Excellent. I think the kids are mostly interested in playing. We've got a sector rocket ready scan. to go. This is the one that's Select full of machine parts and whatnot. Scan. I'm going to drop it over here a little further away so it's not going to dust up too many things, but close enough to help build here. We don't have any sectors being scanned right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to queue up a bunch of these. But they're going to be quite slow, only at 10%. But what I'm hoping to do is build a sensor tower over here once we've got our tunnel. So it'll boost the scanning speed over here quite a bit. Also, my RC Explorer, we're going to send it way out over here to do some research. And we'll be able to recharge the Explorer over here once we finish this tunnel, which I think is going to be quite swell. All right, so you're coming down. You've got all the resources. This should get built fairly quickly. 
Excellent, wonderful. And our little passenger one. So you're slowly refueling. Now, okay, up until now, the shuttles have been refueling themselves because we're the International Mars mission, but it's slow. Also, if you're playing as someone else, you won't be able to refuel yourself. So what's the solution? Well, if you go into your building screen and you go to production, you have these fuel refineries. Now, you don't have the technology to build them from scratch at first. You have to bring a prefab from Earth. And if you play as someone who doesn't automatically produce fuel, your default setup will include one fuel refinery. This produces fuel from water. It takes a little bit of power, takes some water, and it produces fuel. So I'm going to grab one of these fuel refineries, and it has to be connected to a pipe. It doesn't actually matter exactly where it is. I'm going to go and put it... Um, Anomaly. Can I fit it right over here? If I move this uh, this RC rover, which doesn't actually have to be there, I'm going to see if I can tuck it right into the corner here while connected by a pipe. Mm, no, the storage things are a little bit Research awkward. Complete. I guess we'll put it here. I'm just going to rotate it so that it is going to be connected to the pipe. It might be, it might get a little dirty from the water extractor, but I don't think it'll be too, too bad over here. I think the, the amount of dust does fall off with distance. So this thing doesn't need any workers. Just needs the power and the water, and it will start to produce fuel for us. You can set up a schedule. For example, you might want to turn this off at night, right? Because at night, we don't produce solar power. So this is not really a time-sensitive kind of thing. We don't need to produce fuel as fast as possible. Maybe we want to turn it off at night so that this thing only runs while our solar panels are active. Hey, that's kind of a neat idea. Let's do some of that. Our research is done on soil adaptation. That lets us build proper farms in our domes. The, the farms are bigger than the hydroponics. They're like a full, a full wedge, a full sort of like three building size. Um, but they produce a lot of food and they're very cool. What do we have here? Rockets and shuttles require less fuel. Ooh, let's queue that up. That sounds handy. Got over here. Farms increase the comfort of all residences in a dome. Ooh, people like being somewhere with farms. Plus the farms can produce a little oxygen. Here's a new spire building. So again, that's a thing that goes in the middle of the dome. This is a medical center. It has larger capacity and is more effective than the infirmary. Ooh, all right. Um, that's the robotics. Drone battery increased by 50%. That sounds really handy. Lots of really useful things developing. So we've got this fuel refinery, so it's going to make more fuel for us. This fuel will automatically be loaded into our rockets by our drones if they have the uh, if they have fuel around and they're not busy doing something else. So these rockets will now refuel themselves a lot faster. The other thing you can do with fuel that is really, really, really powerful is, if you go under infrastructure, is build the shuttle hub. And the shuttle hub is the reason the rocket scientist makes your starts so much easier in Surviving Mars. We're going to see what that's used for in a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and, where's you? You're there. You're still unloading. This tunnel is nearly done being built. Oh, we might not have any concrete nearby because... We got concrete over there, but it might be out of range. Our RC transport, I would like to get you to reset your route here. Load resources here and empty resources. Oh, no, sorry, my bad. Um, cancel, cancel. Load, I have to tell you to load concrete and then unload it over here. I think we're actually out of concrete in this area the here. The first colonists are all gamblers coming to Mars. It's the ultimate roll of the dice. <laughs> Kushi Patel has the gambler trait. Okay. People like being gamblers. There we go. Things are being built now. Chuka, chuka, chuka. And yeah, I think the drones are having to travel a long way to pick up the concrete. So um, setting up our little transport to move the concrete from here to here is going to make that go a lot faster. So done, done, done. We now have this. Now at the other end, by the way, if you click on a tunnel and you click this button here, boop, you can see the other side of the tunnel. So over here, what I would like to do is a few things. I would like to... Um, well, we're, we're going to have a dome here, so in theory, we're going to need some sort of oxygen and water pipe. Not only that, we're going to need some sort of power. So, you know, we get a little power cable going on here. And I want to build, to help us scan over here, I want to get a sensor tower. So again, that's under, um, that's under infrastructure. So a sensor tower. So we can go and put that up. So it'll help us scan the area. That's good. What's going on here? What's the symbol? This is complaining that there's no drone commander here. There are no drones in range of this area, so no one's going to be able to build anything. Now, we could build a drone hub over here, but the problem is, even with the drone hub, and let me get the, uh, here, explore, go explore over there. Even with the drone hub, no one's going to build this drone hub in the first place. So what can we do? Well, that's what the RC rover is for. This is a mobile drone hub. So we can take this guy, and tell him to move all the way over here 
and then we'll have drone command and then this can get built. Now that's a long way to walk and drive. We can be a little quicker if we tell our drone ship to just go. We just right click on the tunnel. So first it's going to collect all of its drones. If we right click on the tunnel, he's going to drive through the tunnel. Boop. And if we go to the other side so we can see, he's come out of the tunnel on the other side. Hooray! So now we have drones over here. So if I move you, say, here, we have drones in this area. So we no longer get that no drone warning, which is great. This is a prefab, so it's going to get built instantly. And our drones are nearby to pick up... Time, <gasps> a human has been we had a baby! Us. It's truly a unique miracle. Aww. Little cute little Martian baby. Excellent. Colony has been evaluated positively. Additional colonists can be called from Earth. Excellent. Let's do that right away. We've got tons of living space. Let's go ahead and get a new ship. We'll just do one right now. I'm going to launch it with the same things as that last time. Matching colonists are 49. If the matching colonist gets lower than 12, then you're not sending a fuel, full rocket. So do double check. All right. So you're going there. That's good. Now, most things are being built here because the pipes and... Research so this complete. this was a prefab. The cables and the pipes only need metal, which we happen to have nearby. The sensor tower isn't being built, though, because it needs metal and electronics. We need electronics over here. How are we going to get it? Well, I guess we can use our transport to load up a bunch of electronics at the other base and then bring it here. And then we're going to have to transport Sector other scan. things like concrete and machine parts. Does it start to sound like it might get a little tedious? And at first, depending on your start, you're going to have to do a lot of that. But at some point, it starts to feel like it might be a little frustrating. Is there a way to make your life better? Yes, there is. First of all, I'm going to put down a depot over here so we've got somewhere to store this stuff. And you can see our bots are automatically going to go and grab the nearby metal and bring it over there. That's great. But that's still not bringing electronics. So again, we could use the transport to do it manually. But boy, that's sounding like a lot of little micromanagement and work. What can we do to make our life simpler? Well, because we are a rocket scientist, we have started with the uh, technology to build a shuttle hub. We're going to build a shuttle hub. It takes 10 concrete, 15 polymer, and, tel and 10 electronics. And we're going to build it um, here. I'm going to sort of scrooch it in... Uh, Right there. Boom. Done. So it's not a prefab, but we do have the technology to build it. So that should get built. I think we've got everything nearby here. We've certainly got the polymer. We've certainly got... The, yeah, yeah. We've got everything nearby that should get built. This shuttle is ready to depart, and it is empty. So go ahead and launch. That's going to be swell. Once it's built, what these shuttles do is they are automated little things that automatically move resources where you need them. So once this is built, the shuttles will automatically bring, say an electronic component over here so that we can build the sensor tower. It's awesome. The downside, well, downside is that these shuttles require fuel to operate. That's why we built the fuel refinery. A, yeah, sure, it helps uh, reload our rockets faster. But B, the real reason, and the reason I built it here and here, is that our drones will consistently have to fill the shuttle hub with fuel. And so that uses resources, right? I mean, the shuttle hub by itself uses power, and this uses power. Um, and this is going to use some of our water, and so on and so forth. But the value of a shuttle hub is not to be understated. It's really good. More anomalies. Uh, you can tell that your explorer isn't busy because it's got the little pause symbol here. So I'm going to go and send it to get this anomaly here for some more science. We still have lots of stuff in the queue, right? Yeah, we're good now. Do, do, do. And we've got a shuttle ready to land. This is a shuttle full of passengers. So I'm just going to go and land it here again. Although it is going to kick a lot of dust up over here. But, you know, it seems like... I should put it near this building, or near the dome. So we got lots of living space. Um, we still, we're still really good on metals, right? Okay, I'm going to leave off the metals extractor now, unless we end up and with some New unemployed people, which arrived. I think we might. So more colonists, lots of food in here as well, again. Take a look over here. We do have three unemployed. So I could go and turn on the metals extractor, or maybe I want to research faster. So over at a research, research lab, I could add a second shift and we would just research that much faster. That's interesting. The other thing is if we've got some complaints about some missing services, we could maybe decide to build some extra buildings here to keep people happy. Um, people want luxury. They can get luxury from a gambling center or from being able to do certain types of shopping. So that might be a thing. Um, I think for now, the best thing for us to do might be to add a second ship to our research. I like that. Now, we still have room for 13 more colonists over here, so I'm going to order up another shuttle worth of passengers. And again, we've got enough matching people. I will launch you. That's great. And then we've got this area over here. So I'm going to put a cut in here. This video has gone quite long, but we have a very successful 
little mining base going on. Oh, and we had our shuttles flying around. Did you? Did we spot them? Oh, there it is. Let me go to normal speed. So this shuttle over here, this is going to automatically grab resources where there's a lot of them and balance them out to other places that need the resources. And then occasionally they're going to come back and dock themselves over here. Chunk, chunk. Go down there and refuel. By default, these things get built with three shuttles. They have room for six. You can spend extra electronics and polymers to build more shuttles. We're going to be fine with three here for a good, good long time. Power's good. Oxygen, good. Water is still fine. We've got lots of metal. Concrete. Food is through the roof because we get 120 with each shuttle. We've got lots of polymers, electronics, and machine parts. We're building our own machine parts. Things are going pretty well. I think our next base will get set up to build electronics and polymers, and that's going to be our next episode. Thanks for watching. See you then.